Thank you. All right, because I want to be very respectful, we're very grateful to have an all-star panel today here. Um, I will introduce myself and introduce the panelists, but before we do that, I just want to give out a few quick thank yous. Thanks first to all of you for coming out here on a rainy day. Um, how many of you have never been to the research park before? Excellent. How, did, uh, how many of you drove here? A few people. We do have free parking here if you do have a car. Anybody take the link, the new bus? Yes, or other buses? All right, well, um, the, for those of you who might be newer to campus, uh, the, the, the link bus route is brand new this year, so it's, uh, hopefully there'll be more operators so it can run with the frequency that was intended, but great to have 15-minute bus service from here, from Research Park to the rest of Central Campus. So. We're grateful to that. Um, thank you also to our companies who are attendants today. We have a great mix of some of our larger corporations and startups. Uh, we do events like this quite often. This one is specifically, obviously, has a specific group of people that we are want to be here because graduate students don't always think that there are opportunities for them here in the research parks. So it's really important that um, we call that out to your attention, and hopefully you'll tell some of your friends peers and colleagues too. Can you turn the music down? So, another thing that I want to thank is just uh, to our panelists who I am going to now introduce. So my name is Laura Blau. I am the Director of External Engagement here in the Research Park. I worked here for a long time. I've seen lots of students and I've I worked with lots of companies, so that means that I have a lot of sometimes useless but oftentimes useful information in my head about what companies are doing here um, and what is going on across the research park. And really, um, we try to be very helpful to you to kind of ninja your way through this process to hopefully match you up with an opportunity. And so, um, one of the reasons we brought this panel here today is we want to hear from them firsthand how they how they got their opportunities, what how they found their match, so to speak, here in the research park, and also just a little bit about what drove them to want to engage um, in an internship while they're in graduate school. So I'm going to turn it over to Stephanie. I'm actually going to have each one of you introduce yourselves. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what you're studying and what brought you to Research Park initially, but don't get too into it because I do have other questions. So we'll go down the road first here and then we'll ask some questions and I promise I won't make all of you answer every question. So. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie. I'm a fifth year neuroscience PhD student and I'm currently a, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm currently a combination drug product development intern with Abvi. Um, and I feel very lucky to have gotten this position because I just received an email and I applied. Um, and yeah, we'll get more into that later. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Niharika Gurjar. Uh, I'm a graduate student, currently pursuing my master's in information management. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm working uh, with Aqua as a data analyst and I, like, yeah, I, I've liked to research bar because quite a straightforward process, and I think we can answer one of those questions. Yeah. Please hold it close to you. Sure. So, there, so, yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, let's go to the front. Okay. <laughs> so my name is Pranay, and uh, I'm a first year PhD student in the aerospace engineering department. I worked with Cordova last summer as a summer research intern, and uh, uh, I'll probably talk more about the experience from in, in later questions, but yeah, if you have any questions about Cordova, feel free to ask right now on the panel, or at the end of the panel, you can come make me. All right, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Adish, and uh, I am the Autonomy Simulation Engineer at Brunswick iGen. Uh, I got this um, position via an internship that I did here, uh, starting last summer, and then transitioned into a full-time position as I graduated. Uh, I got my master's degree at UIUC in uh, Electrical and Computer Engineering, and uh, really glad to be here. We have a bunch of different areas represented, a bunch of different colleges, a bunch of different um, areas of study, but I think one of the things that people most want to know when I talk to students is, what are you working on that excites you in your internship and what keeps you coming back every day? And that can 
be, you know, not just some of the work, but maybe also if you talk about some of the process or the teams that you're working on, that would be great. So I see all of you nodding. So if you all want to answer that question, I'm more than happy to indulge that. So I'm currently working on drug delivery to the brain using a combination therapeutic. And I really find it exciting because I'm learning something completely new that I have no prior experience with. Um, I do have experience with like having to pick up new material quite quickly, um, so I'm still doing that. But another aspect that I really, really love is the At The Innovation Center. Um, I think from the first time I stepped foot in there, I was just like blown away because honestly, the kitchen is really great. Um, the food is really great, but also um, my supervisor is really nice and just always available. Um, both here at the Appy Innovation Center and then um, headquartered at um, the facility in North Chicago. And we also have a bunch of social events that go on throughout the semester. Um, we got to go to Curtis Orchard a couple weeks ago. That was a really fun experience. And we always have guest speakers come in. So on the professional development side too, I think it's a really enjoyable experience so far. So just to give you a background, um, I actually got uh, selected for the cybersecurity intern position and um, then I progressed towards the data analyst position. So I feel that uh, getting to work on two such a different domains uh, with a company just gives you a lot of uh, learning experience along with the exposure. Uh, the kind of work that I'm doing now is more progressing towards the automation part which to be really honest is something that I'm learning and uh, you know, getting to just getting the hang of knowing a lot of technicalities. So this is something that, that's really exciting. Um, along with that, the kind of team that I'm working with, I mean, my manager is like really supportive. Uh, and you know, she, she just helps me out um, if, if I'm stuck anywhere or if I need any kind of assistance. Um, and she, she, makes, she makes it sure that I have that. So yeah, that, that's really fun. Uh, I guess one fun, fun part about interning at a company is that uh, you get to work on real world data. So the data is, is a lot dirtier than what you see in school, and uh, you also have tons of data. And I guess one advantage that I had working at Cordova was there was nearly uh, unlimited data, and we also had nearly un unlimited compute, which obviously we don't have back at school. So that was a fun experience, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, so Brunswick, for those who don't know, is a, is a company in the recreational marine space. Uh, we build boats that are for fun on the water and that really reflects in the work culture as well because every couple of months we take out a boat and go to the lake nearby and spend some time on the boat um, and then come back and think about the pain points and try to solve them. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is um, uh, building a simulation platform for autonomy. So we have a mock-up of the boat uh, in the office. Uh, we have a like a 140 degree projector screen in front of us, uh, where uh, the boat has all the controls, and it's basically a glorified video game, uh, a very realistic video game. So that's what I'm working on right now, and it's been super awesome. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you guys. So yes, we. Where else would you want to build technology for boats in, than in central Illinois? So I think that's the appropriate place, don't you? Uh, but if you ever have a chance to go into any of the research park offices, we, we uh, sometimes do tours. If you have a student group that would be interested in potentially touring, uh, we love to work with RSOs. So, um, or if your program is interested, let us know. We can't accommodate everyone. We do do tours of the incubator every Thursday at 4 o'clock. So that talks more about what's happening with the startups. And you can sometimes get to meet some of the startups as we'd like to put them on the spot and tell them what they do, tell you what they do. So just a few notes about that. But getting inside the spaces is pretty neat. Um, I, I laugh about the comments about food because we tend to feed people a lot. And I was touring a potential new company for the research part today. And I think providing food to interns came up like 18 times. So um, they might think there's something wrong with us here in Champaign-Urbana, but I don't know, that's OK. 
Um, tell me something that might sur have surprised you about your internship experience. Like maybe it was something that you learned, maybe it was a project that you worked on, maybe something that was a good kind of surprise. So I'll let you think about that for a second. Uh, I guess one surprise sort of was that uh, coming into a, work, a, a company the size of Cordova, I was expecting a lot of administrative stuff to uh, happen before I get to work on real work projects. But surprisingly, surprisingly it, was, it was super simple, partly because the uh, research publications of the companies are kind of different from the actual companies in the sense that they're more of the innovation centers and they have a lot more independence and the process is way more streamlined than what you would expect it to be. So you could get started as quickly as like three days, whereas if you go to an actual company, it'll probably take you two to three weeks for onboarding, which is almost 30% of your summer intern, so yeah. Um, I think that's a good So as part of my internship, I uh, had the opportunity to go down to Florida, which is one of our manufacturing units. Um, and that sort of put things in perspective for me because working here in a small office or a fairly decent office uh, doesn't really, it doesn't give you an idea of what's going on out there. Uh, once you see the entire manufacturing process, you sort of get a sense of uh, where you stand and where uh, whatever you're doing is sort of part of that process and that feeling is really nice and I wasn't expecting to feel that when I went out further. So field trips are important. So actually something that also came across today when we were touring was about companies taking students to um, headquarters or various different places so that are manufacturing plants or et cetera. So those are oftentimes part of the research park experience. So what would you say is something that, um, that you, it sounds like you're getting paid to learn, first of all, which is maybe what people don't expect, but um, what would you say is something that you have gained either in quote unquote soft skills, I hate that term, but uh, or in other skills that you didn't necessarily know before you started your internship at Research Park? I guess uh, you have to deal with a lot more documentation. I mean, back in school, if you work on a project, you just let it run, get some results and done with it. But here you would want someone to use it in production and you have to document every single element of it, test in every possible scenario. And every algorithm you develop has to be a lot more robust than a simple project where you reach a goal and you're done with it. That's, that's one main difference. Delivering the task uh, within a stipulated amount of time is something that I learned uh, during my internship because you know when you are working for a full time position you at least get 40 hours to work but being an international student uh, I just get 20 hours to work for a week and um, so you know delivering that given task in just 20 hours of week or 20 hours of time is something that I have learned over this internship and yeah. Uh, in grad school, there is, I think, a lot of focus on being able to solve a problem by yourself uh, and spending time uh, looking at a problem and banging your head to the wall and trying to solve the problem yourself. But when you come to a, when you work at a at a actual company, there's a lot of focus on getting it done quickly. So you have to, at some point, accept that uh, you're not good at something, and uh, that is, I think, a very important skill uh, because we are not uh, tuned to do that. Uh, especially as grad students. Um, so I think that's uh, something that I learned over time uh, is to accept that I don't know something and then go ask for the answers and uh, get it done as quickly as possible. So we're going to take it back to the beginning. So I know, Stephanie, you said there was a story behind this, but tell us a little bit more about how you got your internship. So what was the process of, the, of applying 
What was the interview process like? Um, you mentioned, of course, the onboarding was quick, but um, but tell us a little bit of the preview story of how you you know arranged or got to that point. Yeah, so I definitely think I got lucky because I had a previous internship before this one at a small venture capital firm, and my role there was sourcing, researching, and evaluating different startups uh, as the first step in the investment decision-making process. Um, and so I feel like I'm, in a lot of ways, I'm doing that now. Um, I'm getting more and more familiar with the specific uh, scientific fields, and then my job is to distill that and let my supervisor know what all I've learned and create reports and presentations on it. Um, so the interview process for this current role, I think, was more of a conversation. It wasn't the, you know, sort of like stereotypical interview of like, you know, tell me what you're best at or anything like that. It was, it was really more of a conversation. Um, and I think that, again, it was, I just applied through an email um, that we got forwarded to us by the department head. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to hear how everyone else did that. Um, so for me, uh, the research uh, part of job board came in really handy. Um, I saw uh, the job posting that uh, ACCO was looking for someone to in the field of cybersecurity and having the uh, previous work experience. I thought um, I might just apply for it. So I. So my resume got selected, I got the call for the interview. And the interview was pretty uh, straightforward. We had technical questions and the behavioral ones. And of course that um, the HR contacted me with the top letter. And this was just for the first project. The second project, uh, it was a bit different. Um, so when I got into the second project, uh, I was given a task to be completed before the interview. Oh my God. which was needed to be completed before the interview and in the interview I got questions asked about the task, how I completed it, the approach and uh, more technical questions regarding it and then the behavior parts. So yeah, pretty much. Um, so in my case, I wasn't really planning to do an internship and I was taking a course in spring and I wanted to do something in computer vision and I started looking for internships and I found a posting in a research park at Coleva. Uh, so the process was fairly simple. You just have to, uh, I mean, it'll be in the job description, but keep looking at the job board of research park. They keep updating it every few days and uh, they also keep posting them on the social media handles so you can follow them too. Uh, so you just have to send an email to someone with your resume and I think a small statement of why you want to apply, I think. And then the, the, the person who's handling the applications for a simple hiring manager. The hiring manager would contact you, who is usually, you, who you will most likely going to be your actual manager. And you'll have a short behavior and technical interview. And it's more of a, will you fit into the team and do you have the required skills sort of interview. And once you're done with the interview, you'll get a, most, uh, hopefully a, a selection or a rejection note from them. And I guess after that, uh, after that, it was very simple. You just have a quick background check and stuff like that. I guess one note I have for international students is that uh, in some of the companies in Research Park, you get hired through the university. So the summer intern doesn't really count into your CPT, uh, uh, the CPT uh, budget you have. So at least in God of our case, I was hired through UFI. So it doesn't really count as CPT. It's more like a on-campus job. You, some of you might be interested to know that. Uh, I got my internship through probably the last career fair before COVID. Uh, this career fair was held at I Hotel specifically for Research Park. And uh, this was like exactly a week before the entire country went into lockdown. So that was fun. Uh, uh, and then, so that career fair, Brunswick was there. Um, uh, one of the interns at the time was uh, uh, demoing a small robot that got me interested. Uh, we talked about it for the next 15 minutes. Uh, the next day I got a call for an interview and uh, the interview was again more like a conversation about what uh, jobs they have and uh, where I would fit in that position, um, what my experiences are, what, I'm, what am I looking for from an internship. Uh, so it was really more like a conversation, it didn't feel like an interview. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I mean, if, 
if you want uh, to get into the industry, I think the biggest advice that I would have is just go keep going to these events. I mean, you're all here, so you've taken the first step, obviously. So just keep going to more of these events. Um, thankfully, I think things are getting better, so we are having more in-person events where you can network and talk to people. So hopefully it's all good from here. Okay, so I'm going to give you my next question, and then I'm going to tell you guys a story about the last career fair. So, uh, <laughs> so the next question is, tell us how having your internship has impacted your studies, if any. So that's the question, and that you don't, again, don't all have to answer, so let me know who wants to answer that. But yes, you are right, Adish, that was the last event that we held. Um, before the world shut down, and it was at the I Hotel, and we, lots of companies started pulling out, and so we did still have a robust amount there. We put signs up, of course, this is before we were wearing masks, it was basically like, don't shake hands, like elbows, you know, it was kind of like, okay, this is a little weird. But it did go off. I will say, though, that I think most importantly is that um, internships in the research part were very steady throughout the pandemic. And I would attribute that to the fact that the companies in research park had already sort of navigated how to interact with their headquarters and their motherships in ways that other companies just had to figure out on the fly when the world shut down. So we were very well positioned, very few internships were canceled, in some cases people had summer internships that they were supposed to go to that did get canceled and they ended up staying with their research park companies, so it was still, a, I think, a good experience overall and that has perpetuated since then. I will say that some companies have changed or adapted some of their policies. There are many students who really, really want to be in the office and are tired of sitting in their apartments or their dorm rooms. There are other students who want to be remote, and so, I mean, I think there was a hy hybrid, we didn't call it hybrid before, but I think that was happening for COVID, but I think it's probably more common now. So, if you do have questions about where people work or what they're doing, of course, some of those are very job specific, um, but that is, of course, something to talk about each individual with each individual employer. So, anyone want to take my question about how did your internship impact your studies? I started my internship in August, and like I mentioned earlier, I've had other internships. Um, I would say it honestly just makes you prioritize things a little better because I do have to balance, obviously, my own research along with this internship. And it also really made me realize that organization is key, um, and I've also just picked that up from my current supervisor at Appy. He's super organized, and um, I think when I look back at my PhD experience, my internship at Abby is going to be one of those things that definitely stands out among the different things that I've been involved in here. Uh, I guess one one of the major takeaways that I implemented back when I went back to school was try to stay more organized, as Tiffany said, and uh, also documenting your stuff and. I guess more, most importantly, making your things more reproducible. So before my internship, I was more, I mean, if I, if I was working on something, I'll uh, just create a local environment where I run the code, get the results, and show it to people, and I'm done with that. But uh, that's, that's, not a, that's not how it should work. I know that, but uh, you just get used to it when I have time constraints. But I, I make sure that I, I took best practices from my work. Uh, where you have to make sure that your work is reproducible by anyone, so setting up the environments the right way, and documenting the right way, things like that. Those were like my main takeaways that I took back to school. Uh, I started my internship in the summer, uh, which was like a full-time job. Uh, I was not going to school at the time, but then during the fall, I decided to continue as an intern, um, and I had to work somewhere around 15 to 20 hours a week. And uh, that really taught me a lot of lot about time management because grad school, as it is, has a lot of things uh, that you need to do and uh, a lot of uh, uh, lot of things that you have to give time to. Like I remember doing an assignment that was just three questions, it took me like an entire weekend. 
but uh, when you work for a company that uh, when you're working for a company 15 to 20 hours a week it really teaches you how to manage your time and uh, that sort of translates into when you're full time as well so never bad uh, thing to learn so. so we are going to take questions from all of you so anybody wants to just think of questions that would be great just raise your hand and i'll bring over the mic to you but i'm gonna uh, i'll let you take some time for that oh we have one already all right hi uh, my name is Bezan. Uh, i'm a phd student uh, in solid developmental biology uh, i just have a question like what is the best time to apply for internship for next summer Summer internship, I mean, is the right time to start applying. I mean, uh, as, as in when we start applying, we'll get an idea of what kind of roles and opportunities that are available. So, yeah, we we'll just keep check checking the job roles and actually you know, the so I guess in general, if you're looking for in the, in the, in the very general case of internships, I think there are like two cycles for most companies. One is before December when they finish finish most of the hiring by the first week of, week of December and another one in like uh, December to March kind of thing. In the case of Cordova, I think most of the hiring is in uh, spring and summer. So they take a lot of interns in spring and summer. And most of the interns in fall are usually those who continue, some of the people who've worked in the summer, who continue their work. So um, I guess for summer, Cordova has openings in March too and probably some right now. I guess my advice would be to keep checking the job board, job board every once in a while and yeah, just look for opportunities. So from our perspective, and I will get your question in just a second, um, I always tell people that the best time to get an internship for summer is way before the summer. And oftentimes, I mean, the companies here in Research Park are here because of the year-round workforce. So to Pranay's point about getting a job now to start in spring semester, that's one of the huge value propositions for companies. You can get a summer internship anywhere, right? But the companies here are looking for students who really want to make that commitment of more than one, just one summer or one semester. So oftentimes the best time to get, now to get that summer internship is by getting one for the fall or spring. Now, I would also argue though that company, all companies hire on different cycles. So to your point, we have many companies who are here. We have startups that basically will post whenever they want to because they're startups and because they're, you know, whenever they get funding or whenever they have time, it's much different than a large company like ADM, which has a much longer process. So literally the whole idea that yes, we are posting jobs on the job board literally every day and they have different time cycles, et cetera. So, um, that's just, and it, that can be frustrating for people, but it also can be iterative that I would say that a lot of what happens here in Research Park is it gives you an opportunity to build a relationship. So if you, there's a certain company that you're interested in or a certain um, domain or a certain industry, take the time to reach out to those people even before they have a posting on the job board. So there was a question over here. Hello, my name is Himalak. I'm a PhD student in aerospace engineering. I have a question. Um, some of you guys have mentioned, you know, the time commitment. You're trying to balance the time when you're working part time uh, and start, you know, going to balance with school. Also, if you're trying to balance that with school and research, can you speak a little bit about the time commitments and also, you know, how are you balancing between the amount of time you're placing in the job and the the research time as well? It's like. For me personally, I have to do my 20 hours a week on, on research as well. Um, yeah. I can talk about Brunswick specifically. Uh, for, um, for interns, we really make sure that uh, your education is your first priority. So during the fall uh, and the spring, we sort of keep it flexible for everyone. So anywhere between 12 to 20 hours a week is uh, considered like a good internship. So, but yeah, definitely the focus should be your academics and your academic research. I would say you definitely have to keep the expectations right, both with your advisor and your manager at work. Like letting them know that you're also working on the internship and letting your manager know that you're also doing actively doing research, that will definitely help. Uh, 
I would say that there are some companies too that have made their um, their operations very flexible to accommodate the needs, especially of graduate students. So I was at Abbott today and they allow students to work literally anytime 24 seven. They can badge in, badge out, they can work on site or not on site. There are some companies that say you have to work between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. So it just, again, that, that flexibility just depends by the company, so definitely something to ask about in that process. First of all, thank you so much for organizing this night. It's like uh, really good to know how people got internships. But my question is uh, to Niharika, actually. Uh, you said you are in MSI program, right? So I want to know, like, what was your timeline like? Did you apply in the first semester, or like, how was it? All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna end with, uh, tell us with one piece of advice that if you could give yourself when you started your internship or somebody new who's coming into your company, what's a piece of advice that you would give to uh, a new intern starting, uh, a new graduate student intern who's starting in your organization? I'll let you guys think about that first. Poor Stephanie is right next to me, so she always has to go first. Definitely make an effort to communicate. I remember when I first started, I was having trouble just understanding what I was supposed to do. Um, so I remember I sent um, a couple emails to my supervisor, and I think I called them like um, my daily blocker and like daily progress. So I'd be like, hey, this is what I've done, but also this is what I'm sort of stuck with. And I found that Opening that line of communication was super helpful because I didn't find myself wasting time um, until the next time I talked to him. It was just like right then and there he was able to provide me with some guidance. And also, I wasn't spending all this time, you know, sort of like researching this place that wasn't going anywhere for me. Um, so definitely communicate and... Yeah, I, I think that's, and maybe just remain visible. Um, that's something actually that my supervisor shared with me yesterday. We have a weekly touch point meeting, and um, we always talk about like professional development. And he mentioned that um, that it's important for people to stay visible, and that comes with like sort of those soft skills. Like people want to work with, um, you know, other enjoyable people. So make sure that you are. Um, you know, maybe volunteering for things or just participating in events and, um, yeah. Um, I would say just uh, be passionate um, about what you do and just just be passionate about learning new things. Uh, you never know what kind of a project uh, you get in the middle of something that you're currently working on. So, I mean, yeah, I would just say that uh, uh, you should in the sense that you always try to ask help when you're stuck and you don't have to figure out everything by yourself. There's always someone in the company who knows to, fi who knows to fix it, like way less time than what you would uh, spend to try to figure it out yourself. So always ask for help and uh, try to network as much as you can. So when you're in an org, you have access to the entire org's wiki, so the team notes or the org chats. 
So if you have other projects that you're interested, other people who, whose work you're interested, feel free to reach out to them. There's no harm in emailing them. The worst it would happen if they're not replying, which is fine. And uh, it always helps to have contacts in the company when you're looking for roles post your internship. So try to network as much as you can. Um, for me, I think what I would say is um, be open to uh, getting outside your comfort zone. Uh, when I was in grad school, I was super focused on robotics and control systems and I wanted to make a life out of it. Uh, but when I started my internship, I got hired as an electrical engineer. So I was working on like core electrical engineering tasks like developing circuits, uh, interfacing with different hardware. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. I mean, that really improved my skill set and I had a lot of fun doing it and I didn't know that I was good at it. So, and now that I'm, I'm, I've, hired, I've been hired as a full-time, now I'm back on track on, to, to working uh, on more robotics and control systems type work. Uh, but just being able to work on things that I did not know that I could do uh, was a really great learning experience. And I think as interns, you have the opportunity to to sort of do something that you don't want to do or don't intend to do. And uh, if you don't like it, you can always go back to school and do what you always want to do. So. Well, before we, we're going to wrap up our panel, that's our last question, but I just wanted to do a couple shout-outs before I let you guys go back to networking. I wanted to shout-out to our companies, so thanks to our friends at ADM for being over here. You guys are well identified, but we have some others who may not be as household, much of a household name as ADM is. Um, our friends, uh, so some of our startup friends, but before that I did want to call out Abby, our, Jerome is over there, so if you'd like to talk to, so that's Abby is where Stephanie is working now. Um, our friends at Natrion, who are a battery technology company, if you'd like to learn more about that, they're over here. Our Alex with Ascent, so Ascent's office is really cool and it's right there. Um, and uh, they'll tell you about their technology. I see a walk-on up there, so any of you are interested in uh, robotics and neuroscience and the integration of those two things, um, Adil, maybe you'll come down here. I don't know. Adil, you want to do a demonstration right now? So Adil is the CEO of Psionic and was once in your shoes. So an example of a graduate student turned CEO and um, it's as well. So anyway, thank you all for being here. Let's give a round of applause to our panel. Thank you. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks so much.